we have a prediction of the, of the incidence of the bladder cancer for the next years. This is a, a, a prediction of an increase in the, in the incidence of this type of cancer. Of course, this is worldwide data, and we, we believe that this increase is more re um, related to the developing countries, since in more developed countries nowadays we have a stable disease, and in some countries we have a decrease in the incidence because of the, the epidemic of, of the tobacco exposure that is decreasing in most developed countries. And so, uh, a few years ago, I think two or three years ago, we, we, we did a study with uh, one of our master students trying to describe the trends of bladder cancer frequency in, in Portugal. And we used data from our national cancer registries and also data from the, the Portuguese National Institute of Statistics and uh, trying to assess the, the dimension in terms of epidemiology of this problem in, in Portugal. And here we have crude data, so we have the, the crude number of, uh, of new cases of, of uh, bladder cancer in Portugal, here in, in, this, in this chart, both for men and for women, and we have the crude incidence rate. And what we can see is that uh, uh, in a qualitative analysis, just looking at the chart, that we have a trend towards an, an increase <coughs> of the incidence during the, the study period that we have data from the cancer registry. When we analyze the mortality, we have uh, a large number of years to analyze, and we also observe an increase in the mortality, both for men and for, for women. But we, we, we decided to, to, to do a, 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 more, a more detailed analysis using the joint point analysis, trying to identify trends of, regarding the, the, the incidence and mortality, and uh, <coughs> Here we have data of the incidence, so the, this, this uh, red, red line, and what we can, we can see is that among the males, we observe a statistical significant increase in standardized, age standardized incidence rate between the period 1997 to 2005, and then we have what we call stable incidence. When we look at women, we have for the whole studied period a statistical significant increase in the incidence in, in Portugal. We did the same analysis for mortality, uh, estimating the, the annual percentage, percentage change, and among men, there was, the, the, the mortality was stable in the first period, and then we observed an increase um, in the last, last years, between 2005 and 2018. Among women, there were no statistical significant differences in mortality regarding the, the, the entire period. Uh, we also analyze uh, in, in this way, um, certified by different regions of Portugal using the, the, the regional cancer registries, and we observe that uh, all, uh, in, in, in the in the Sorge and in, in, the, in the central region of Portugal there were no difference during the entire period, but regarding the incidence, but uh, uh, in the north of Portugal we have in the in the in the first period of analysis. Uh, an increase in the incidence, but in the final period, 2005-2010, there was a statistical significant decrease in the incidence of bladder cancer. And in the south, the, during the entire period, we observed uh, an increase in the incidence. This is uh, uh, among men. And among women, we only observed a statistical significant increase in the incidence in the south, and there were no difference in the other, uh, in the other places of Portugal. <clears throat> we also uh, try to analyze this in a, in a, in a more detailed way uh, uh, in Portugal. Uh, an analysis certified by districts, which is one of, of our administrative divisions of our country. And what we can say is that, of course, the crude number of new cases is higher in the, in the places we have more population, such as in Porto, Lisboa, and Setúbal, and Braga. Okay? But when we uh, estimate the incidence, the age standardized incidence rate, what we observed, there was a trend that to, to a higher levels of incidence in the south of Portugal. Okay? We don't have uh, uh, much explanations to this. Um, probably it can be related to the tobacco exposure. Uh, there are some um, uh, works 
talking about the, the, the consumption of tap water and the use of triadone tanks that can be a risk factor for bladder cancer. And we know from other studies that we perform that in the south of Portugal we have higher levels, uh, in higher median levels of triadone tanks in, in, the, in the south region of Portugal. But this, this is in, 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 in it's not final data, so we have to have more major results to, to present this. But uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the map, in the right, we, we performed an analysis that was trying to identify the places in Portugal that the, the incidence changed during the period 2006 and 2010. And what we observed, that in almost every place in Portugal there was not a change but in the north of Portugal, in Porto and Viana Castel, there was a statistical significant decrease in the incidence. And the, the only place, the only district with a statistical significant increase was in the Castel Branco. Okay. Um, in the last part of this work, what was trying to compare what we observe in Portugal to other countries that are similar to us with the, the same level of development. And what we can see is that uh, in Portugal, as I stated before, we have a trend towards an increase in the incidence, and we have other uh, countries in Europe showing the same, but we have other ones that are uh, nowadays, or in the last decades, the they, 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 they results show a decrease in the, in the incidence. And but the most uh, worrying uh, results of this study was when we compare the mortality uh, uh, among the, the, the several countries. Because Portugal is probably the only country in Europe, or well, the, 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 the countries, especially in the most recent years, that is increasing the mortality. Okay, we, since we know that the, the incidence is slightly increasing, but uh, we have a more increase in, in the mortality. Probably it means that the survival is not so good as we, we would expect in this disease. Okay, so it's, this is much different from other countries, as you can see here in the, in the, in the right chart. Uh, we addressed also the, 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 how was the, the, the net survival, the five year net survival of bladder cancer in, in Portugal. We only had data from the North Portugal because it was the only cancer registry that had data of four cohorts of patients regarding the five-year net survival and the results show that more or less we have a five-year 70% survival of, of this of this patient. I don't know if it's much different from Denmark but uh, it's, it's, it's our, our results. So since we have a, a stable incidence in several countries in Europe and we observe a, dec a decrease in mortality, this means that we have higher levels of surviving patients with bladder cancer. So the prevalent, can uh, prevalent bladder cancers is, incre is increasing, which means that we have more patients in our consultations in the health system that we have to do surveillance. That, that's why it's relevant to have new tools in order to ease easy the way we do the, the, the surveillance and to decrease the burden of that, that uh, surveillance programs in the whole health system. Okay. Uh, there is an, an, uh, uh, here a chart also from uh, the World Health Organization showing the, the, in Portugal what is the, 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 the weight of the incidence of the, some of the most frequent cancers and the bladder in, is in the sixth position. However, if we analyze the prevalence instead of the incidence, is in the fourth place. It means that it's the fourth more, most frequent uh, cancer among the cancer survivors. Okay, so this is relevant data. Uh, there is a, an interesting paper published, um, I think, almost 10 years ago, um, trying to analyze the economic burden of this disease across the European Union. <laughs> and to resume the results, um, it shows that uh, several countries have a high burden of costs not only regarding the healthcare costs, but also the, what we call indirect costs concerning the product, product, uh, productivity losses such as mortality and morbidity. So this is a cancer with a lot of costs and that's it's, it's another uh, issue 
that, that will highlight and stress the importance of having a good surveillance programs. So we believe that what Professor Nessen will present to us will help try to, to decrease this, this, uh, this important burden for the healthcare system. Uh, in Portugal, comparing to other countries, we don't spend too much money uh, for each uh, uh, bladder cancer patient in comparison, for, for example, to France, Netherlands, and the United Kingdom. Uh, but the, levels, the, 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 the absolute level of, the, of the, the, the costs we spend is still too high for, for the, the health system. So I think this is the, a good snapshot to introduce what Professor Nessen will share with us. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation and thank you for the presentation. My name is uh, Dr. Nisa Nasani. I'm an uh, associate professor at uh, Zeeland University Hospital. This is our coming hospital. And uh, I'm an associate professor at uh, COVID-19 University. Uh, actually, we are working on the solution trials uh, since uh, 2019. Uh, we performed uh, the trial at our hospital uh, in New Zealand University Hospital, and this is uh, my uh, lab team. Uh, and the other hospital is Opus University Hospital, uh, led by Professor Jorin Dego, and this is his lab team. Uh, conflict of interest, uh, unfortunately, I know. <laughs> Uh, I will speak uh, a very brief about the epidemiology of the bladder cancer. We all together know that the bladder cancer is the second most common cancer in the men. Uh, 380,000 uh, new cases per year, 150,000 uh, de deaths per year globally, 75% uh, of the cases are men uh, between the 50th and the 80th years. 75% of the non muscle uh, of these cases is uh, uh, sorry are non muscle invasive. Uh, of them, 20 to 30 percent uh, PT1, and about uh, 10 percent is carcinoma in situ. Uh, <coughs> bladder cancer is the most expensive cancer disease uh, in terms of cost per patient. Uh, cost uh, per patient so from diagnosis to the death, it is about 96,000 to 187,000 US dollars. So it is very expensive disease among another cancer patients. We do the surveillance program in Denmark a little bit different from the recommended from the Euro European urology. Uh, when it is uh, low or intermediate risk group, we doing the 4, 8, 12 month uh, follow up. In the European Urology, we recommend it three, uh, three months. Uh, by, by this program, actually, we save uh, one uh, control period. Uh, but uh, we making the control or the surveillance for every 12 month uh, for five years. Uh, if, if there is any recurrences, so we have to start uh, the fellow of the program again by 4, 8, 12. In our hospital, the last year we performed 845 sister studies only for the servants. In Denmark, uh, in, uh, 2020, we have uh, 2,314 bladder cancer patients, new diagnosed. Of them, 1,200 patients with the PTA low grade of, uh, If we look for this 1,200 patients, 
each patient will undergo at least seven to eight cystoscopies within the next five years. So it is a lot. In our solution trials, we focusing on PTA low grade or what is grade one or four two. The aim of the study to evaluate the potential clinical impact of your monitor test regarding possible detection in the number of cystoscopies without increase the risk of clinical progression by evaluating the sensitivity and the specificity and this is the primary endpoint. The secondary endpoint to understand the meaning of positive and negative Euromonitor test in the results of cystoscopies in the opposite. So we would like to find out if the Euromonitor is positive and the cystoscope is negative, what will happen after two years? We don't have the results to today, but we have the results of the primary endpoint. Some background about short background about the genetic uh, evaluation for, uh, for the Euromonitor. The presence of the somatic mutation in the promote TRT uh, gene in different types of cancer. In the bladder cancer, the somatic, uh, these somatic genes show prevalence up to 85% along with FGFR3 mutation at codons 248 and 249 represented the most robust biomarker for the bladder cancer. And this is what we are looking for in the Euromonitor. We designed the study as multi-center, prospective, observational, clinical trial. We invite all patients diagnosed with the PTA low-grade bladder cancer within the last two years to be uh, participate in the study. Uh, patients underwent uh, new adjuvant chemotherapy, uh, patients with metastatic disease, patients uh, received installation therapy within the last uh, th four weeks, and uh, patients with the carcinoma in situ excluded from the study. The results of your monitor test are blinded to the clinical staff and the results of the cystoscopies are blinded to the laboratory staff. We calculate the sample size by this way that we estimate the sensitivity of the euro monitor by the 75% and the specificity for 75%. Uh, we estimated the recurrence rate for the PTA low grade about uh, 22 to 25 percent within the first uh, two years and uh, the study power to estimate change in the sensitivity by 20 percent and change in the specificity by 10 percent confidence interval uh, with a minimum 30 events within 24 months. So by this way, we need about 160 patients to complete the trial. Uh, if the patient is newly diagnosed with the PTA low grade bladder cancer, the first control, as I mentioned, it is about four months. So they will come to the four month cystoscopy, your monitor, eight month cystoscopy, your monitor, 12 month cystoscopy, your monitor. 16 and 20 months on your monitor, uh, 24 months uh, in sister study and your monitor. If the patient's coming uh, previously diagnosed with the bladder cancer, PTA, low grade, it's been coming only three times to the sister study and the your monitor, and the rest of the time it is coming only to the your monitor. And this is to find out the secondary endpoint. We start at May 2019, and six months after we start, uh, we being uh, we being restricted by the COVID epidemiology, so we don't have the ability to invite the patient to the hospitals. So we decide to make the home test or test home. I don't know what we have to call it. 
but um, we make uh, some instruction for the patients how to collect the urine sample and filter the urine sample by their cells. We make a video for them if they don't, uh, if they cannot read the instructions how how to make uh, the filtration of the sample. And actually, we don't have any patients that uh, not accept. Uh, participate in the study or continue participating in the study. It is very easy way to get uh, the urine sample from the patients by this way. We already did 250 tests by home test. At the end, or until today, we have 196 patients included in the study. Uh, 32 patients, we don't have the results uh, for the cystoscopies yet uh, because it is blinded, so that's why every hospital has to send me the result of the cystoscopy and your monitor, the company have to send me the results of the, uh, of the your monitor and I will put it to the third party to make the analysis. Uh, we have 18 patients, uh, the urine was uh, in the lead and this is maybe because of the storage, the collections of something having in the urine, but uh, it is bad quality urine we get. Uh, three patients actually, they have always positive Euromonitor. And uh, after four months, they have positive Euromonitor. After eight months, they have positive Euromonitor. And all the cystoscopies was negative. After about 12 months, these patients develop uh, hematuria, and we discover uh, and we discovered upper urinary tract uh, tumor PTA low grade in all these uh, three patients. So I exclude them from the study because it is one of the exclusion criteria for uh, this time. So at the end, we have 143 patients in our institute that I am presenting the results for them. Uh, this is the distribution of the patients with the visit one, visit two, three, four. So we need about 100 patients to finish the last visit. The main age of the patient is about uh, 69 uh, years, and then uh, there is uh, uh, there was uh, 64 uh, males, and the recurrent rate was 27 percent, and it is. Uh, it's very important that is fitting the international recurrence rate. When we are looking at the time of the inclusion, we had 143 patients, only 17 patients they had two positive recurrences. At all, we have performed 332 cystoscopies in this period. Uh, all together has zero monitor test and there is only 39% true positive. In the whole trial, we performed 686 zero uh, monitor tests. Of these, we had 68 positive zero monitor tests. These patients, not all together, were uh, in their own sister studies. We had 68 patients with the positive cystoscopy, all together underwent to RP, and only, 20, uh, uh, only 29, uh, 39 patients had a uh, true positive, 29 patients with no tumor on the histopathology. And this lead to the positive predictive value of the cystoscopy in this study, it was 57%. It is very low. When we are looking for the results of this study, in the, at the inclusion time, 143 patients underwent neuromonitor test and cystoscopies. We did not miss any patients in the first, uh, at the inclusion time. All the Euro monitor tests positive, they was positive in the system study. True positive, true positive, Histo histological verified.
this leads to negative predictive value of 100%. When we're looking for the 332 tests that altogether underwent cystoscopies in this 143 patients, we missed actually only five patients and this lead to negative and predictive value of 98% and the sensitivity is very high, 87 and the specificity it is 97%. This is in 332 patient cystoscopies. In conclusion, your monitor test presenting high sensitivity and specificity rate in the real world fellow program we can already see that we can change the surveillance if we make your monitor test every four to six months and cystoscopies every second year. So by this way, we can reduce the number of the cystoscopies at least 50%. Thank you. Any question? <laughs> of course, yes. Uh, uh, I'm not going to into the bladder because to, to leave room for uh, more expert people on the, uh, uh, on the audience. Not going into the bladder, but it was very impressive to have these three abstract uh, cases detected by your monitor. So what do you think this is an indication that the test we could do a trial on the test for use in, in uh, surveillance or diagnostics of the tumors? Um, unfortunately I have to see you know because the your monitor it is uh, it is developed through the surveillance, not through the detection. So and we don't know, we don't know the prevalence of the urine monitor results in the detection um, at the diagnostic time. Uh, maybe in the surveillance for the other tract uh, urinary cancer, yes, maybe, because the, the nature of the tumor is the same. But at the diagnostic time, I don't, uh, I don't know what is the results. Yeah, but first, but upper tract is like, uh, 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 another indication that we could do studies on. Exactly, exactly, because the, how to collect uh, the urine sample, uh, how much we have to collect, uh, how to keep it, it is uh, different from the bladder cancer. And again, uh, the test it is uh, designed for the surveillance and not for the diagnos diagnosis. Uh, Congratulations, I loved the presentation and uh, I work a lot with blood cancer and uh, these results are uh, quite impressive because uh, I've studied a bit of biomarkers and this is really impressive if, um, if, it, if it confirms. My question is, in the study design you only used low risk uh, tumors, right? And no grades. No grade, okay. Oh. Yes. Because it is low risk and intermediate risk. Low, intermediate risk. Okay. Now the question is regarding your uh, follow-up protocol. Yes. Because I follow up the uh, the protocol of the EAU guidelines, and if for, for the low risk, for instance, you do cystoscopy at three months, and then another one at twelve months, and then you do once a year. Yes. My question is, with this monitor, what is the advantage? My uh, my my follow, uh, my point is. Probably this study would be much better with the, the higher risk and intermediate risk uh, groups. And then it would really prove its uh, real value. I, I would make, I, if you ask me how to make the surveillance in the PTA low grade, regardless if, it, if they are low risk or uh, intermediate risk, I would do the first control by the cystoscopy to be sure that we not need uh, tumor. Uh, and then two year and two year. So we have at, uh, at all about uh, three cystoscopies and normally we have 
So are you planning to do this in the high risk patient? Uh, this is this study is designed for the low risk. Uh, sorry, for low, low and intermediate risk. Because of the FGF uh, yes. part. Yes. Okay. We, we can try it, but we decided from the beginning to make the focus of the trial to catch the the PTA low grade. And PTA low grade we know very well. It is the, intermediate, the low risk and the intermediate risk. Uh, but uh, for the PTA high grade, we did not uh, include them in this study. My other question is regarding the uh, specificity. Where the, the most problematic uh, um, confounders that we have in cystoscopies are BPH and urinary infection. Yes. How do the, was this regarded when doing the study or not? We we do always the urine test because before we we making the the urine monitor, except when we do the home test, mm -hmm. we take everything and we don't know the results of the urinary infection. Of course, the student wants to show what is real life and not lab real life. Of course, exactly. That's what I am saying. This is a real life. Uh, uh, that it is uh, a specialist uh, doing the lab uh, the cystoscopy, uh, it is uh, a resident doing the cystoscopy, it is the real life yeah. uh, world. So, congratulations again for the promising results. Um, as, as my colleague said, uh, you, you, you restricted your sample to, to tumors of low risk and intermediate risk. I think from from our clinical experience, we, we, we have most of the patients in, in the high risk, and those are that have a high burden of, of usage of healthcare resources. That's why we, we, we think that probably that population will will benefit more from a urinary biomarker instead of, instead of low risk uh, population. I do think that. If we, we, we design a trial uh, to address the high risk population, we can decrease uh, what is the, 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 the pattern of follow up that the EU guidelines uh, recommend, which is uh, three months cystoscopy plus cytology. Uh, I believe we have to make a new trial for the high grade. And this is the very important uh, point that we have to divide the bladder cancer, uh, the high grade it is different from the low grade. Uh, for the high grade, we just, it is very dangerous disease, the progression is very high, we have to be cautious about the results of the, any test, uh, any biomarker. And the only reason we did not uh, include high grade in this trial actually, because we, have, we had another trial with the high grade patients, so we could not include them in the in the study. That's why we divide the high grade and the low grade because we have another trials with the Professor Joran uh, 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 from the Opus they doing the high grade with the expert. But of course, we can try we can do the same design for the high grade if we find patients coming to the to the sister scope, We can take the urine test and test it. And find out how to how to go out there. What, what is the reaction of the neuromonitor test? But very important, we don't have to mix everything together. Low grade is low grade, and high grade tumor is high grade. Okay. Uh, another question: uh, When we do the follow up of, of this kind of patients with non muscle invasive bladder cancer? We are always concerned about the uh, the, rec the recurrence or uh, uh, metachronous lesion in the upper tract. Um, that's why we, once a year or depends on the protocol, we do a, a, an image of the upper tract, um, a, a, usually a CT. Uh, do you think that using those three cases, I know that there are only three cases that you reported here, that the, the cystoscopy did not uh, identify anything, and the, 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 the problem was an upper tract tumor that in the near future we can change the way we do the protocols for the upper tract 
and we can only use, for example, cystoscopy plus zero monitor, and we don't, we don't have to do an image of the upper tract. Actually, in our surveillance, we don't know, we don't do any CT scanning uh, in, in the beginning because they have the bacteria. Uh, we catch the bladder cancer, any any kind of the bladder cancer, so we do the CT button in the beginning. But uh, if it is clear, so we will not do any image in the future, except if they get a new immature uh, condition. Okay. Um, yes, if we if we have the results of your monitor or the other urinary tract, so maybe we can add it. Uh, the problem is we have only one trial on the other urinary tract uh, with the euro monitor, and we have to wait for the result to find out what is the sensitivity and the specificity for the neuro monitor for the other attack. Uh, before this, I don't know actually what is the sensitivity of this. Yes, if it is uh, very good as uh, what we have here, of course, we don't have to uh, make the, sisters, uh, the CT or urography and we coming to save a lot of patients because we all together know the disease in the other tract is more dangerous than in the bladder. About 75% of this uh, uh, urethral tumor it is invasive. Yes, sure. Okay, just a final, a final question. Um, in another setting, here we are discussing the surveillance, but uh, if we are thinking about, for example, screening uh, high risk populations such as those that have smoking habits uh, from a long time ago and have a high risk of developing uh, a bladder cancer. Do you think uh, in the near future we can use this tool as a screening tool? For example, like we use a, a low radiation CT scan for lung cancer for those patients that have high risk of lung cancer because they were smokers for a long time? I, th I think we have to add PT, P53 to the test because, as I mentioned before, your monitor test designed for the surveillance is not designed for the diagnosis, and we don't know the difference. But, but I think if we add P53 to the test, maybe we can use it for the diagnosis. Actually, I already have 42 patients. Uh, perform neuro monitor tests uh, for the diagnosis issue. Okay. I don't have the result yet, but uh, we try to find out where we are. It is not designed for this, but we do the standard uh, investigation for all these patients plus neuro monitor beside it. As I said, I don't have the, uh, the final result, but it will come. I am not sure it is uh, very good like this. But uh, I, I believe if we can add uh, P53 to the test, so we come to be very close to the screening test. Okay, thank you. So, as uh, I understood, you are uh, also testing for the high risk, high grade tumors, right? Not the monitor. Yeah, yeah, but another, uh, another, another which genes are being evaluated? Uh, we're using the expert actually for the high uh, for the high risk patients. Okay, but the expert is already available. Yes. Commercially available. Yes, yes but we, we use it for the uh, only in the in the research, not uh, as uh, okay. As a normal. So I'm just uh, imagining here, imagining the future that uh, your money is a success, and then the expert is another success. If I go to my hospital administration to see to say. To, to the low risk patients, I have this test. To the medium risk, I have this one. And to high risk tests, I have this one. What do you think it would be the uh, the reception of our administration? Uh, if you say to them in another way, because they don't know what is this test and the other test. If you yeah. say to them, uh, I will save you uh, three million dollar per year, so they will be very happy for you. So can you we have... can we guarantee that? Uh, with this result for the neuro monitor, I, I, if I, only in my hospital we're doing about 800 cystoscopies per year. If I remove three, 400 patients from my hospital, uh, it is cost us about five 
5,600 per Michigan, it is about $800 to make this successful. Mm -hmm. It will move $800 multiplied by 400. So it is a lot of money to get the administration out of hospital so online. Congratulations with your uh, presentation and thank you so much for being uh, coming to Portugal finally. Um, I just have a little question and it's probably a bit uh, pertinent, but you mentioned in your presentation almost at the end that um, you envision that a test such as Euro Monitor will reduce the cystoscopy for at least 50%. We all know that the gold standards and the guidelines, they say the gold standard is doing a cystoscopy. And my question is, do you all convince are you that the biomarker such as Duro Monitor will one day replace and will become the gold standard for the follow-up of bladder cancer? Or do you think that it will always be a tool used to reduce the frequency that the patient has to go to the, the cystoscopy? Or do you envision that it will be the gold standard for treatment? This is maybe a hope I have. But I think, I believe, if we invest more in uh, these biomarkers altogether, I am not speaking about Euromonitor, Expert, CX, uh, uh, CDRS, and there are many uh, biomarkers. If we, if we make a good investigations and investment in these biomarkers, maybe after five, ten years, we don't need for the system. But we have to be more sure we have to be sure that we not increase the risk of the progression uh, when we get this point. So I, I, I believe we can, we can escape this. There is many cancers, uh, melanoma, uh, lung cancer, they are going very far in this uh, matter. Uh, the other cancer we just started in the last maybe five years with the biomarkers. And I believe in the next five to ten years, the biomarkers will change the, the, 